Dread Men in Black. I've already kind of, um, of uh, described these, so I'm not going to um, go into it. But uh, I just want to tell you that they don't look like Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones. Uh, the movies are, that those movies are based on a comic book. And, you know, there's, there's just tiny shreds of truth, but most of it is just, you know, total comedy for the sake of, you know, the movie going public. But again, this is intended to acclimate people, to familiarize people. So if you see someone coming up to you, you know, dressed like that, you're, oh, wow, cool, it's Will Smith, you know, whatever. Um, then we have the reptilians. These supposedly from, come from the constellation Draco. And as some of you may know, Draco is the Latin word for dragon. It's the dragon that's in the heavens. These are carnivorous, cannibalistic, and seven feet tall. They exist at the top of the alien food chain. They like to eat people. The tenderer, the better. They also will eat other aliens if they're hungry and the mood strikes them. Uh, these are very, very cruel and very, very nasty but supposedly they are the administrators. They are the people running things behind the show. And they have been recently cited, and by recently I'm relatively like the last 20 or 30 years, uh, by numerous people, myself included. And they're not something you'd want to run into in a dark alley. And again, some of you may remember the old TV miniseries, V, where they had these huge ships, you know, coming down. And uh, what happened? You know, they looked just like us except they wore these funny red jumpsuits. But ultimately, you discover they're wearing masks. They take off the masks and they're lizards that like to eat live mice, at least. Now, the big question everybody wants to know is this. Can believers be abducted? Well, in my opinion, the answer would be a qualified yes. Many believers have reported being assaulted in their homes by aliens and repelling them by using the name of Yeshua. By the way, we prefer to use Yeshua just because that's his real Hebrew name. Nobody when he walked the earth called him Jesus. The angel that came to Mary did not say, and you shall call his name Jesus. His name is Yahshua, which is neat because it means Yah, which is the name of the Almighty Father, saves. Or Yah is salvation, depending on how you translate it. So it's a wonderful name. We prefer to use that. Anyway, others say they have used the divine name to no effect and were still abducted. And both of these people were solid believers. Now that's interesting. What do you do with that information? Oops. Um, here's what I think. I think the fact of the matter is it does not have to do anything with the goodliness of the person. Open doors might be an issue in some cases. By open doors, I don't mean they left their front door open. I mean, we, those of us that deal in liberation or deliverance type ministries understand that there are certain things that can be like either a sinful lifestyle or maybe even something in the home. Like, you know, for example, we have this one case where... Uh, a family's daughter was being horribly attacked by demons. Nothing could be done. Pastors, ministers, psychiatrists, nothing worked. Uh, we came and um, the senior guy who was in our group at that time who really was very, very moving in the gifts of the Spirit, he was led to walk around the room and he found this lady had a spoon collection. And one of the spoons had a little tiny demon face on it. He threw the spoon out the window and the kid was instantly set free. That's an example of an open door. You know, where it's relatively benign. It's not like you're deliberately doing something nasty. I mean, nobody would have even thought of that, you know. But yet the Lord pointed in that direction. So that's one possibility. But we must remember that bad stuff can happen to good Christians. They might be robbed, murdered, or persecuted and still be righteous. They can be injured and killed in natural disasters. I'm sure there were some Christians that were killed in Katerina. I'm sure there were, you know, Katrina, I'm sorry, there were Christians that were killed in the tornadoes that hit in Indiana a few days ago. You know, just because we're Christians, that doesn't mean we're bulletproof. So if that's true of natural disasters, why shouldn't it be true of something like this? 
Remember that these abductions are often a physical phenomenon. Some may be spiritual in nature. They're a deception. But some are undeniably physical. They leave behind marks on the body. The evidence is found in the home. By that I mean there might be scuff marks on a windowsill or an open door or little wet, weird-looking footprints going from the window to the bed. Imagine waking up in the morning and finding out that your entire lower body is wet and full of grass and stuff. You didn't even think you left your bed and you looked down on the floor and there's these little strange footprints that look like nothing you've ever seen in your life. It would tend to creep you out, don't you think? Uh, also, sometimes implants are found. We're going to talk about that in a couple minutes. Uh, then finally, third parties sometimes witness the abduction. I was talking to a very solid Baptist preacher I know. He's pastor of a big church. And uh, he said he was out ministering to someone, sick call type thing. And he was driving through this neighborhood where it happened another one of his congregation members lived. And he saw this UFO hovering about 200 feet away from the house. And he actually saw the window open and a body floating out the window, going right up through the air, just that slow, and going into the UFO. And this guy was stone sober. I mean, you know, Baptists aren't into drinking, amen? <laughs> so, I mean, and this guy has an uh, impeccable reputation. I don't think he'd ever... And then, then later on, the congregation members said they had had weird nightmares and had woken up with all these strange marks on their bodies, bruises they didn't know where they came from had nosebleeds, and eventually an implant came out of the nose. Now, what are these implants? Well, they can be any number of things. They can be little metallic beads. They can be little cylinders. They can be almost organic looking. Um, they're usually very, very tiny. They're much tinier. You've all, I'm sure, seen these things about these RFID chips and you know, embedded chips and all of that where they're, you know, they're pretty small, but these things are much smaller. And um, what we tell people to do is pray and ask the Holy Spirit to remove these things, either by destroying them or by having the body expel them. And in most cases, either the person wakes up, there's blood on the pillow, and there's this little tiny thing there, either metallic or of indeterminate origin, or... It emerges out of their body like you, they get this weird sore or welt somewhere and then the next couple of days out comes this strange looking thing. And um, this is an actual implant that was recovered. Now, uh, you don't do it, it oddly enough, this is, we went, actually went to a biology department at a local college and got this blown up because actually it's smaller than a sesame seed. And the first thing I thought was, it looks like a chicken McNugget. <laughs> but what's funny is, and I don't know if you can even see this on the screen, but up in the upper left, there are a couple of little black things. Now, this implant is 20 years old. It, it came out of a Christian 20 years ago. There's two little black things, and those little black things were originally, they had little tentacles coming out of them little kind of feeler thingies, and those broke off over the years. I mean, because they were very, very tiny, and I'm sure once this thing was out of the body, it kind of, you know, dried up like any organism would. But I asked the guy at the bio, he says, I said, what is this? And he says, well, he said, bleeped if I know. <laughs> that was his candid answer. He said, I've never seen anything like this. You know, he magnified it even further. He said, it's, it's not a seed. It doesn't. It appears to be a biological thing, but yet it's not. So, anyhow, that's a real live implant. I tried to find another one, but we're in the process of repacking stuff, and I couldn't locate it. But this is one of two that we actually have. Now, back to the question: Am I an abductee? Well, first of all. Some of you may have heard this, but I'll, I have, I'll say it again. We had the thing where I was studying with the Archdruid, the Grand Master Druid of North America down in Arkansas. Sharon and I were down there, and every night we'd be on the mountaintop sitting at a picnic table learning all these weird things about how to, you know, be a Druid. 
And about half the nights we were there, especially it was clear, this UFO would come sailing in, quiet as can be, and hover over the mountaintop for the entire class. And it was like 200 feet above us. I mean, I could actually look up and so could the other people and see windows in the thing. And sometimes we'd see little weird figures walking around in those windows and sometimes they'd even go like this, you know. And then when the class was over, just as silent as a whisper, it would, you know, glide away. And it wasn't like a dirigible or something because we could see the stars beyond it. It was sort of basically cigar shaped. And, you know, this druid who was teaching us would never say what it was. He wouldn't comment on it. We'd talk about it among ourselves, but none of us had the nerve to ask him because he wouldn't say anything. And then there's a time in Wauwatosa a few years later when I was told by my spirit guides to go out in the middle of January at midnight when it was like 20 below zero and walk through this park by the Menominee River, I think it was. And, you know, I walked there and this brilliantly colored oval thing came down out of the sky. It looked like a thing of pure light. And it came very, like, within 100 feet of me, and then all of a sudden it just, like that, enveloped me. And the next thing I know, I was inside of this thing. But this wasn't your typical uh, abduction experience by any means. I was standing there before, like, this panel of five or six somethings. I mean, some of them looked perfectly human, except they had kind of strange robes on. But some of them looked very non-human. And the odd thing was, is that they started asking me questions. And they were mainly asking me questions about masonry. Now, isn't that interesting? And they wanted to know how well I knew the Masonic Catechism I'd been taught. And so I actually had to give this back and forth thing that masons are required to learn before they go up to the next level of the lodge. And then, at the end of it, there was no further comment. The next thing I know, I'm laying on my back in the snow in this park in Wauwatosa, and it's about an hour and a half later. And I was just a little bit cold, so I knew I hadn't been laying there the whole time, or I would have been half frozen. Then the other thing is that I was drawn so quickly and so deeply into Anakian and Thalamic magic. And these are two very advanced kinds of magic that involve, how shall I put this, transpatial relationships where you are opening up doorways into other dimensions and you're inviting beings from other dimensions through. And some of these beings were pretty scary. Uh, all I can tell you is one time my wife and I and some of our coven members, we went down to the shores of Lake Michigan in the middle of the night when the moon was full and we did a call to Kulu. Now Kulu is one of the great old gods of the trans magical system. And, you know, this thing came up out of the sea that was taller than a skyscraper. And if you want to know what it looked like, pretty darn close, and you can stand the movie, there's this movie that just came out recently on video called Hellboy. And in the end of that movie, they have this thing that comes through and I tell you, it's about 80% similar to the thing we conjured up out of Lake Michigan. And supposedly this is a god from another dimension who is far older than the god of our dimension, which, of course, is bunk, but that's the story. So, I mean, you know, that kind of magical stuff was very, very potent. We would actually look through these rips in the fabric of time and see galaxies and see other dimensions. Then we, I think many of you have heard the story of my being taken to one of the moons of Saturn out of my bedroom back in Iowa when I was probably in my late